Hi, I'm Liz Tassone, and this is my dog, Charlie. And today, Margaret and I are filming at my house, and so Charlie has decided to become part of the podcast today. So, Charlie is a six-year-old miniature poodle, and he's part of the podcast today. Uh, what we're going to do today is something a little bit different, a little bit interactive. So, you're going to have to be part of this and go along with this. And what you're going to have to do is learn to use the, the pause button. And maybe you've already done that a few times on your computer when you get interrupted. There is a pause button at the bottom of the screen, the, the small screen that you're watching where the video is. If you hit this, uh, it'll stop the podcast. You can go and get what we're asking you to go and get. And then come back. And when you're back, hit the pause button again. And we'll still be here. So... What I want you to do right now is um, when you hit the pause button, go and get two sheets of paper and a pen, and then we'll continue this. All right, so hit the pause button and go get your sheet of paper, two sheets of paper and pen. Okay, I hope you've hit the pause button again and we're moving again. And so at the top of the first sheet of paper, what I want you to do is right at the top, list of things I need for my, and then you, I put mom, but you could put whoever, whatever loved one you're taking care of. Just go ahead and put that at the top of the sheet. And then you're going to need a little, a few minutes of time to do that. So just go ahead and hit the pause button again. And go ahead and list some of the things that are very practical things that you need. Maybe you need someone to take your mom to the doctor's appointment on February 5th. Maybe you need someone to pick up uh, a gallon of milk or her favorite candy. Or maybe you need someone to sit with your mom just so you can go have lunch with a good friend. But just list a few things that you need. And the purpose of this is so that next time you're on the phone or someone stops by and they say, you know, call me whenever you need something, well, you're going to be able to get out your list and say, well, actually, I've got a few things written down. So the point of this is that you're a little more intentional with what you need as a caregiver. And it's really okay to ask. And when people say that to you, like, I want to help you, I think they mean it. And so you'll actually have something that you can say out loud to them. And, and you'll be helping both you and them. So go ahead now, uh, hit the pause button, and fill out your sheet with really practical things that you need. Okay? All right. Hope you're back. I hope you've listed some things, and I hope that next time someone asks you, what can I do for you, you actually have that listed down. Your second sheet of paper is for a different kind of things that you need. The things that I want you to list on this are qualities that you need to do your caregiving well. So on mine, I put patience and compassion. Uh, these are things that I need for prayer, that I bring to God in prayer. Um, because the patience isn't something I can ask someone else for. This is something I need to work on myself. And so the things I want you to list on this second piece of paper are things that you might bring to God in prayer. So, again, go ahead and write that at the top of your sheet and take some time to fill that out. So hit the pause. Okay. We are back. And... I just wanted to let you know in regard to the things you've listed that you may take to prayer. Um, prayer was listed as one of the most, actually 87% of caregivers in a study a few years ago listed prayer as their number one coping mechanism as a caregiver. So don't forget this and use that and use the things that you've just written down to ask God for these things because these are, these are how we, we grow as people. And I just wanted to tell you a quick story before we end this podcast about a prayer that Margaret put in the Balance newsletter. So the very first prayer she put in the latest holiday edition here, 2010 holiday edition, was a, a prayer called Be at Peace. And the interesting thing about this prayer, and Margaret didn't know this story and still doesn't until I'm telling it now, is that... Um, a few years ago, actually almost 10 years ago, uh, I had cancer and all of my chemos were in the hospital. And the first day, my very first day in the hospital, my husband, uh, it was a Good Samaritan hospital here in Cincinnati, and my husband went, uh, he was actually in the bathroom of the hospital, 
and um, he struck up a conversation as he was washing his hands with um, a gentleman who turned out to be a priest. And my husband explained what was going on with me, and this priest handed him a little card that had this very prayer on it, and was called Be a Peace. And so we held that prayer, and we said that prayer as a family, and I mean, my copy of the prayer is just in tatters because we used it so often. But it's this very prayer. The interesting thing about this story is my very last day of chemo, my husband never saw this priest again in the hospital, but about six months later, when I was again admitted to the hospital for my very last day of treatment, my husband once again ran into this priest and was able to tell him how much this prayer had meant to us and our family. So I'm going to read you this prayer because it means a lot to me, and I'm really glad that Margaret uh, put this in the newsletter today. It's called Be at Peace, and it's written by Francis de Sales. It says, Do not look forward in fear to the changes in life. Rather, look to them with full hope that as they arise, God, whose very own you are, will lead you safely through all things. And when you cannot stand it, God will carry you in his arms. Do not fear what may happen tomorrow. The same understanding Father who cares for you today will take care of you then and every day. He will either shield you from suffering or he will give you unfailing strength to bear it. Be at peace and put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginations. So this is a beautiful prayer, and I thank Margaret for reminding me of it as she put it in the Balance newsletter. So make sure you read Balance because it's got a lot of good things. So again, I want to thank our sponsors, and you can see them listed on this page. It's Landfair Retirement Communities, VTOS Hospice, Hillebrand Home Health, Blackstone Healthcare, Family Bridges Home Care, Independent U, and Private Home Care. I'm Liz Tassone, here with Charlie Tassone, and we want to remind you that caring matters.